This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. West Michigan Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. Hello and welcome to another edition of Silent Voices. I'm your host Dennis Lawrence. Beside me is Dina Klostra. Today we're going to do another grandparent story. Uh, and these stories kind of hit home to me because uh, I was a grandparent that lost some grandchildren and it's kind of funny Dina we always see the same pattern every time we talk about uh, people not grandparents not being able to adopt their grandchildren and it's always seems to be the same story the same excuses so we're gonna have a guest actually two guests in our studio today Kim Johnson and Julie Rugink. Kim Johnson is from Kent County, and she is the grandmother that uh, was denied adoption by uh, Bethany Christian Services. And Julie Rugink was a very close friend to her, and I believe uh, she is also a licensed social worker. So uh, <laughs> she's a. Uh, very well educated and helped to see Kim through this process. So Tim, Kim, I, I, I want you to show the pictures of your grandchildren okay. real quick who we're talking right. about here. Well, these are the last ones I had done when at Christmas last year. And this would be me with all four of them. Uh, then I have one of my two little granddaughters, Montana and Amaria. And I have me with my two grandsons, Christopher and Tegan. And I think one more yes, of me with my two granddaughters um, that I took. And I took him last Christmas because they're only allowed to see each other twice a year at Christmas and their birthdays. When I get up, they will let me see him twice a year. So. Okay, they've been adopted out, both of them? Um, or, uh, yeah. Four of them? Yes, the adoption went through for the uh, Tegan and Amaria four days ago. Okay, let's. Uh, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about uh, how the children were taken from their mother in the first place? Um, my daughter's fiance and her broke up, and the fiance's sister called CPS because she was mad and had my grandson get on the phone and lie to him and say my daughter did stuff she didn't do. And they come to the house and, or well, they called my daughter and said they'd be there at noon. She waited till seven o'clock that night. They didn't show up, so she left. Well, they come over at 9 at night and said, we're taking your kids tomorrow since you don't seem to care. And they, they uh, took them and they let me have the uh, power of attorney. And I went and bought some groceries for them and took them in. And I had the freezer stuff, the cupboards, everything. And I had everything in the fridge, but there was only one egg in the refrigerator. And that's what they put on the report is that I just had one egg in the refrigerator and then it bothered saying nothing the rest. So they took them. And promised they'd keep them all together, which they automatically separated two and two. So, so what you're saying is, is it looked like when they wrote the report, said there was only one egg. So they were telling the truth. Yes. But it just looks like there was one egg in there, and there nothing there else. Was no, other food. no, there was okay. nothing. And even Julie here had helped buy the groceries, so you know she's. So that was uh, that was when they first were taken, and then, yes. then they denied you uh, the, yep. the fact that you could not um, foster yes. them. They came right. over and ripped the papers right up in front of my face, the power of attorney papers, and took them. 
and made me take him out and put him in the van with him clawing me and crying and screaming and you know the whole bet and yeah it was it was a bad bad time so a grandmother that could not give these grandchildren the loving that they deserved yeah and they always lived with me but I went to Kentucky for a year to take care of my dad till he passed away and when I come back I come back to all this no you know. now your daughter did a lot of things to try to get yeah. them back am I correct yes what, what she all did parenting did classes she went to uh, counseling she her and the kids all had the same counselors they just went with you know at different times she did everything she was supposed to do and then she was supposed to start her uh, domestic abuse because she had a boyfriend that had abused her before but that had nothing to do with the kids so I don't understand why the dad would do that but um, a month before she got everything done to get the kids they upped her court date a month and took them right there and pr promised her she signed them off that I could have them and they lied to her and they didn't let me have them so then it went from there so they went into adoption then yes right? yeah and so they I wanted to adopt the, uh, the older two Chris and Montana were already adopted Tegan and Maria were put on hard to adopt because Tegan has a lot of problems he has ODD ADD he has Prater Willie he's got all these things wrong so he was a very troubled child very got into a lot of trouble very angry so I went to all the foster care classes did all of that now that's that pride training did they tell you you had to be licensed at that time yes okay so that's why I did all the classes and then I went and took every penny I had to my name and got an apartment got everything they needed their beds everything and the kids uh, lawyer the can't remember what her name was she come out and said she didn't want me to have the kids because she had found out I'd been on chemo before Is this Even, the guardian, guardian ad litem down yeah. in Belia? Okay. and I uh, told her I don't I didn't need the chemo anymore I was fine I even had the doctor write out a letter that said she's cured and they still would not let me have my grandchildren after that they said it's too late that they're already been put up for adoption but they were just adopted four days ago yeah okay so they then they told me I could have you know, they made the adopted parents promise that I could have visits with them. They said it is very, it is, it's, they, the kids need that visit with their grandmother. So that's what I, I was doing. I was going every month to Bethany and having visits with them. Now they've come me down to twice a year. And my grandson looks at me, he goes, me, mom, because they call me, and they said, why do you lie to me? And tell me you're going to see me and then you never mm -hmm. show up. Mm -hmm. and, and it's them that keep canceling the visits. It isn't me, but I'm not allowed to tell them that. Yeah. So they look at me that I'm the liar. And, and why are you not allowed to tell them that? They said that I'm not allowed to tell them anything. Exactly. If they ask me anything, I have to change the subject. And if you do, then they will cancel. Then they'll the cancel everything, and I'll never mm -hmm. get to see them, yeah. Mm -hmm. You told the whole story in seven minutes. Well, <laughs> we need to talk to Julie yet. Yes, because Julie was there for a lot of it. Were you there the day that Tanya told them they had to sleep? I don't think I was there that day. Like I said, I was there, or like Scott you said, I was there a couple nights before to help set up even just to help what I could a few groceries or whatever so I know darn well there were tons of groceries and food in that house now you, you said in, in a letter that I <coughs> looked at and um, that you thought they were earmarked for adoption from the beginning am I correct I believe so because they were younger I mean Christopher is the oldest boy is very intelligent so he's very adoptable even though he was older. The two girls were very young. Again, very adaptable. Tegan was the only one that seemed to be, yeah, the trouble spot because he does have a lot of different issues going on. So when she told me that they had split the children up two and two, and I'm like, why are they doing this? Those children have been through so much mm -hmm. that they need each other. Mm -hmm. And then to split them up, it just tore those kids apart. And they I think that's why there's problems with Amaria now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they restrain her in her bed. And now it's made Tegan very violent because he sees the, the adoptive parents restraining her. And this, the mother is a social worker. I don't get it. And, and you, uh, you have contact, so you know all this is the, going the, on, the, right? The adoptive mother, no. I had a visit with them, and no. she called me to tell me that's the reason she was she was stopping the visit I didn't get my visit with them this couple months ago because she had to restrain Amaria into her bed at least three times a day and at bedtime now you had made the oh, statement wow. that uh, 
CPS, uh, you had called CPS on one of the foster care yes. Uh, yes. homes that, that one of the that children home. was in. Now, yes. was what was what became of that? I, you I, called Bethany Christian on I it first. I talked to the kids' social worker at Bethany, and I was telling her, because I can't tell, say nothing to the kids, I just got to change, change the subject. So when it was over, I'd call her and say, my grandkids said they're being, being beat with pop bottles, empty pop bottles on their back. They, Maria come with a big line down her face where they'd slammed her head in the door. Tegan had a big gash and bruises and black eyes, and they told me that he was just falling down. And he told me I wouldn't eat my rice. He goes, so she, the foster mom locked me outside at night and told me a farmer in the woods was going to kill me and left him out there. And I found out she was beaten with bottles, and they wouldn't do anything. They said the kids were just telling stories, so I called mm -hmm. CPS on, her, on the foster mother. And they ended up shutting her home down. Now, she didn't go to jail, which I think she should have, because... They went through more in that home than what they would have. We would have never done that to my grandkids. Mm -hmm. And it made Tegan very, very violent then. And I was the only one that could handle him. I'm the only one he would listen to. I'm the only one that could talk to him. And, and he'd talk back and tell me the things that were going on, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the day that we went to see the kids, we had a, two -hour, a special two-hour visit, me and my daughter. The first hour, we played games like we normally do. The second hour, they made a DVD and gave it to my daughter of my daughter telling them, I can never see you again. This is my last visit with you. And to watch my grandkids on this DVD <coughs> screaming and crying and vomiting in waste baskets and grabbing onto me and saying, it's only going to be you and us now, right, Mima? And at that time, they told me I could never see you again either. But I fought it. I fought it. Tooth I was there every... I got a visit once a month with them when my daughter was him. I was there every week, sitting in that waiting and watching them come in and out, bringing them dinner because they'd get there at 5 o'clock. I would do this every single week. I would walk. I had pneumonia, and I would walk there in the middle of winter just to be able to see them. And it just... It's crazy, the stuff that they're doing to families and to children, and I just I don't understand how they can do that. I have moms who call me. I actually have a list that I've started um, with the guardian Mail item, Donna Mobilia, of mothers who call me, and I put them on a list, and I have... Um, you know, I'm trying to categorize everybody so I know who's who. Um, and I don't understand how they can do what they're doing. And the only thing that I can come up with is it all has to do with money. That's what I think, too. I think a lot of it. Because it just, it's got to be. Because it, it's like every time we went to court, I know it was Judge Yates is the one that took the kids. He's the one. Okay. That, okay, I just called my daughter earlier and she told me. But it's like he was a new judge. He didn't even know the case. He didn't even know mm -hmm. what was going on in the case. He was just going by what that lawyer was telling him. And she, when I tried to talk to her, she told me if I ever spoke to her again, she was going to make it work and never see my grandkids again. She was, I don't ever want you to speak to me again. And the guardian ad litem is supposed to help with the relationship between mm -hmm. the parent and the yeah. children and, that, and help happen. foster that. And she's not doing it's that. To, yeah, that's no, that's you, you, took, you took the pride <laughs> class, and I took yeah. the pride class too. Um, what did they teach in there about? relationships from the foster family to the parents and grandparents what do they they tried to th they told us to keep things uh open to be able to converse between the families to make it sound like you're one big happy family no. you know what i mean but that never happened the foster parents wouldn't even talk to you about it and, and that didn't happen in my case either uh -uh. Nothing ever happened like so that. So everything that they're doing in these classes are just it's a joke it, it's it is a joke uh, we seen a little video about a uh, uh, 11 year old taking a shovel and breaking down rose bushes, mm -hmm. you know, and, we, and the foster mother comes out and pats him on back. Come on inside and let's let's talk about this. Yeah. In reality, uh, do we ever see that? Have anybody in here seen that? Uh, yeah, we used to do it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so these pride classes really are a, a, yep. nothing but a big joke. 18 hours to yep. adopt. Or to foster. Oh, 18 hours to foster, foster, 12 hours to adopt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what kind of training is that? It and isn't any. How can, you, how can you train people to be parents yep. by going to school? And, the, and, and usually most of the caseworkers through there aren't even married or have any kids. They're trying to tell you how to raise kids mm -hmm. off a book that they read. And we, and we see mm -hmm. a lot of these foster people never had their own kids. Uh, uh -huh. And that, that 
goes with yeah. that Beth Heaven who murdered um, Emily Meno. Mm -hmm. She never had children. Yeah. She never had a CPS record. Squeaky well, clean record. A, you can't have a record if you never had children. Exactly. Unless you're abusing someone else's children, but odds are you aren't around them enough yeah. and, and to what, show up anything. And speaking, what have you learned in um, social class? From my time through social work, I mean, I did extensive search searches into the ICWA laws, uh -huh. which would explain a lot of what you were talking about by being trained in the parenting and foster care in classes. The key should be to keep the extended family involved. I mean, in ICWA, that would happen. And that's the, uh, yeah, for the Indian reservations and stuff like that, where those children have to maintain relationships with their grandparents, with their aunts and uncles and extended family, even if they're removed from the parental home. That's not happening with any other race that I know of. And it's huge in a child's development to keep those connections. And that's what's, what we're hearing as these foster children are getting older. They are starting to speak out, and we've had some on here that have told, told us the same thing, and, and they are very anti-government mm -hmm. uh, kids. They don't trust the government. They, uh, their parents at sometimes even went to DHS and asked for help mm -hmm. with children, and then the children are taken. Mm -hmm. uh, in one case, one was given back, and this this girl I, that was in the foster care, she just scratching her head. I don't know what my parents did. I was in foster care for a year, and I have no idea what they did. Yeah. Well, that was another issue that I have studied, too, in different areas, is the damage that is done to those children, even if it's only six months. Mm -hmm. It is an emotional damage that can't be rebuilt. I mean, it's permanent, and that's why there's so many records, especially children that age out of the system, that end up in prison, into drugs, into different criminal activities, or commit suicide. Well, one big push right now is to keep these children until they're 20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to make That's not going to happen if you can't mm -hmm. do it even by the time can. they're 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, even if they keep them until they're 20, it's not going to make a huge difference. The only thing is, is it'll postpone the statistics a little bit. Yeah, because I, I know, too, that, that when I go and see my grandkids, if they ask me about their mom, I'm not allowed to tell them anything. I have changed subject. Okay. And I thought, well, their mom is doing okay. I mean, my daughter's doing okay. She works. You know, she's home health care provider now. She mm -hmm. does home health care. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, it, to me, what does this do to a kid when you can't even tell them how their Where, mother is? Where did you have your supervised visits at? Bethany. Okay, I had mine at the YWCA Safe Connection program mm -hmm. where I was harassed. They stepped over my parental boundaries and they weren't following their safety protocol. Mm -hmm. I actually wrote a letter to all their funders. Mm -hmm. Within 30 days, they were shut down, whether it was right. from my letter or not. But I went on their website, found out who their funders were, and wrote them a letter and let them know what was happening. And I also sent the letter to the court. Mm -hmm. So, And they were down for about almost a year, I think. But um, no one can tell me exactly why they were shut down. But then they started back up. I've talked to some more people, and they're back to doing the exact same thing. Yeah, it's 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 not right because yeah. I'm not allowed, you know, to to tell them anything about their mother. Mm -hmm. And they worry. How about old her. are 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 the children right now? Um, they're ten, nine, eight, and six. So the, they they know enough. Yeah. To, uh, the what's, baby. What's going she on. well, it's been four years. So Amaria is six now, and she she knows that my daughter is her mom, but she don't remember living with her. Mm -hmm. Where the oldest one, Christopher, was tied to her hip. I mean, that was her, he was <laughs> always doing, you know, and he struggles so hard, and so does Tegan. Because Tegan has got so many problems, and instead of them listening to him, they're always saying, well, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need, you know, if you ask him to do something, he'll be more <coughs> glad to do it, but if you tell him to do it, he has ODD, he isn't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I keep trying to tell them, I've dealt with him all his life. I know what he does. I know how he acts. I know how he is. I know what's in his heart. He's a very loving child, and they were going to put him into the, uh, uh, into the uh, how do they, adoption from anywhere in the United States, where he can be adopted anywhere okay. in the United States because he was such Lord a hard kid to do. Open it up. After they promised they would keep them all together, and they didn't do any of it. Well, wasn't so, there also talk at one point of institutionalizing him? him? They wanted my daughter to sign papers to have him institutionalized. I said he doesn't need to be an institute. He needs to be loved. 
you know, and that, I thought that was awful. Why, because you don't want to deal with him after you took him, mm -hmm. and now you just want to put him someplace where they can just throw him, you know, put him through, the, let him fall through the cracks, and what they'll, they'll do, do they'll put him in a lockdown facility, and they'll put uh, him on drugs. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, instead of yeah. trying to help him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worked in and a we find that uh, we find that with people coming forward, that uh, this movement is gaining progress. Yeah. There has been foster parents that have called me that said they will, will no longer foster domestically due to the fact a lot of these children don't need to be removed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what is happening here in the state of Michigan? The governor. Just uh, hired 750 new CPS workers. Yeah. What kind of training uh, do they have, though? They are, they are cutting off the welfare for people mm -hmm. with four years or yeah. more. Now they're going after fat kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to stop. Yeah, it does. The they, the key is is they got to they have to assist these families, not just work to take the children away. When we talk about assisting, uh, the average income for a welfare mother is $520 yeah. mm -hmm. a month. Yep. Now, if you have three children in foster care, I know of one that adopted three special need girls that I don't think are special need. I know, I know <laughs> them personally. They have, uh, they get $900 a piece per child. That is $2,700 a month, almost 30000 a year yeah. just by adopting these children. And yeah. just think how and far that could go. Well, to helping those to help children remain in their families. homes yep. mm -hmm. with their parents. And, the and that's, that's the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. because uh, there's the middleman there that you know that $900 a month is more what they get because somebody else is getting some money yeah. out of that oh, too. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, you know, we talk about a budget crisis. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed like in foster care when they were talking to us, they say, well, when you get these kids, you got to remember you're not just getting the kids, you're getting all their garbage with it. I said, it ain't garbage. It's their feelings. Okay. It's their life. That isn't garbage. Mm -hmm. How could you be, even the phrase it that way just floored me? You know, to it's have children like, ripped from their parents, yeah. or ripped from and their and then ripped mother, from each and other, not seen it, ripped from your siblings, and they think, oh, they're not going to have any emotional issues. Yeah. and even right. going through the process, they'll say that it's the mother's fault. Yeah, how can you blame the mother? They're children very emotionally scarred. They the didn't act that way yeah. before. They took them from my daughter. And so what they'll do is they'll blame the mothers and say it's your fault. They yeah. have these issues. They have these. And another thing we're finding is they will diagnose the kids without even having a diagnosis. They just decide, oh, this child has ADHD, this child mm -hmm. has defiant disorder, yeah. and they haven't even had a psychiatrist. And just announced last week, being shy is a mental disorder. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Really? Oh, serious. I saw that, yeah. So well, that's, that's an <laughs> another label we're going to have to work yeah. past. But, but guess yeah. what happens when you remove your children, move a child from a home, mm -hmm. from a loving home, and quite often they are loving homes, maybe a little misguided, but still loving homes, what's going to happen? These kids are going to withdraw. They're either exactly. going to act out or they're yeah. going to withdraw. Exactly. Yeah, that's what my grandson is doing right now. He did do a complete turn, 360 turnaround. Tegan did. He was doing great in school and stuff. And now that he sees his sister being restrained in the bed, they said he's turned completely violent again. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that telling a child if you're, I just, well, if you're restraining someone, that's he's not going to be feel safe. No, he is. Because that could happen to him, and he's seeing mm -hmm. what's happening, and basically his sister's being tortured. Yep. I mean, I can't imagine anybody restraining a child. I can imagine anybody that. restraining me how I'd feel. Exactly. <laughs> so that. I mean, that's just the terrible. Fact that that's happening and going on. Is just no. Really and for the uh, the adoptive mother called called me just to tell me this. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Yeah. Then made then made uh, her call. Her other, her other brother and sister at their adoptive home say, "I'm sorry, you didn't get to see our Mima. It's all my fault." To make, then they were mad at her because they didn't get to see me. That was that was uncalled for. Yeah. This just sounds right. like mental abuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I just want to go over real quick. Uh, what uh, what kind of excuses did they use to deny you of this and that? How how long did they string you on with excuse after an excuse? How about, about a year and a half, two mm -hmm. years? What kind of excuses did they use? Well, first they told me because I was staying with my sister. First they come out and measured all the bedrooms because she has a great big module at home. Blah blah. blah. Oh, well, now you need your own place. Okay, let's stop there. Uh -huh. Ottawa County, I just got a call from a foster care uh -huh. boy that is 11 years old. Uh -huh. I checked his residence out. Pastor, 
the pastor and the foster mother, mm -hmm. their th four children, and three foster children in a two-bedroom home. Yeah. These things can be looked the other way. Mm -hmm. They had to have so much footage per child in the bedroom, which was way over what they needed. So then I said, okay, I'll get my own place. So then I got my own place. She come in, she measured the bedrooms. Well, you got to get beds. So I went and got beds. Then got the beds and, you know, all this stuff was going on. And then the, the, that lawyer was just kept fighting me and fighting me. So then she gets, started getting into my past and found out I'd been on that chemo. And that's when it all come up with, well, you were on that chemo. Well, yeah, but I'm cured. Mm -hmm. I don't need it you anymore. You look pretty healthy now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I even had the doctor, the, my chemo doctor, write a letter that stated that she wanted it. So I got that for her. Mm -hmm. And then she turned around and says, well, it's too late. When they took my daughter's rights, the adoption was already, when they said, well, you sign your pay, let these kids off, your mom can have them. It wasn't a week or two later, the adoption was final for the other first when, two. When she, they had uh, started it. When she signed her rights off in, in, in front of the judge, uh -huh. you're always asked, were you promised anything by signing your mm -hmm. rights off? What did she say? She told me, she said, they said my mom could have them. So it's, she did make that yes. statement in court. But it was a brand, he was a brand new judge at the time. Tanya was his first case. He didn't, I don't think he knew what he was doing. I really, truly don't. Because then they come back and, you know, then they start all this stuff. Well, she lives with her sister, so I'm going to go get my own place. She's doing, she has to take her foster care class, so I took all of them. You know, they, they just went on and on and, and on. And it's typical and that they have you jump their hoop after yep. hoop after hoop, but yep. you just don't get the kids. And, yep. yeah, that's what they do. That's, they're famous for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. We've heard this all before. Mm -hmm. I don't think he can tell me anything I never heard before. Mm -hmm. I get calls, you wouldn't believe, last week, five new takings in Ottawa, Kent, mm -hmm. and um, up in Antrim County. Yeah. And another grandparent called me, frantic. So you're not alone. And this show is to bring this out mm -hmm. and get some of these laws changed. We have to get these laws changed, people. So I, I want to thank both of you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I'm hoping that, that this helps other people because I don't want, I want to know that my, my grandkids were taken, that it, it was, that it's a good, good, something good will come out of mm -hmm. all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, I don't want them to just take, be taken in vain. I want this to go and help somebody else. And that's my feelings. And folks, thanks for joining us. You can contact us here with comments, questions, or if you'd like to be on the show at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrights at gmail.com. Or we have a social network. You can join at miparentalrights.ning.com, miparentalrights.ning.com. Once again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you here next week. Remember, your voice can make the difference.